Hey guys, it's day three of Keto Together and we're using our crock pot. In fact, I've got two crock pots so I can show you kind of how we're going to throw this together and mix and match our meals. And I quite literally just went through the, for the fridge to see kind of what was in there. And what I found, I actually went through my freezer too, but I found a chuck roast and a boneless pork roast. And so I thought, well, we'll just do both of them. The chuck roast is only about, gosh, uh, 0.86 pounds, so a little less than two thirds, uh, not two thirds, good gosh, a little more than three quarters of a pound, not quite a full pound of roast. So that wouldn't be enough to feed everybody in the family. If you're doing for two, that's that's great, that's perfect. And then the boneless pork was a little, um, was a little small on the small side too. So I pulled out the crock pots and I'm going to put the chuck roast in a smaller crock pot and because you want to try to like get the volume to be the same because in a crock pot this large you want the volume to kind of match okay so what are we going to do with the boneless pork roast i've got some different seasoning options so when we talk about pork um, I love to do just like a Mexican or Southwestern kind of theme with the pork. I always think that's so good. I could also use just a simple barbecue sauce and throw it in here with some barbecue sauce. So there are lots of different options. And what I'm going to do is just start by putting the roast into the, um, the pan. I'm not putting any liquid in there. I'm just going to put it in the crock pot. And it's just an easy pork roast. Okay. The other thing that I'm gonna do now is think about the seasonings that would go with a Mexican or Southwestern flavor. And so to that little pork roast, and I know you guys can't see this, I'm just going to add first some veggies for the seasonings. And I had a really large onion, so I shared the onion with the beef, and I'm just gonna put some onion in there. I also had a jalapeno, and since we're doing a southwestern flavor, the jalapeno is going to be great. I had part of a red bell pepper I had used some for something else, some other purpose. So I'm going to toss that into the crock pot. Oops, I'll have to grab him and wash him and stick him back in there <laughs> um, because we can't let that go. So I've got part of an onion. Think of a small onion um, and think about, let's see, the, just it was a quarter of a large red bell pepper but you don't have to do what I'm doing we're going to use the ingredients you have on hand so if you have these ingredients or you want to do southwestern um, I've also got a kind of a medium chopped jalapeno now what I'm doing with these not everybody in the family loves jalapeno so I've made them big enough that even after they've been in a crock pot for some time they'll still be able to pick them off when they're finished I'm also intentionally, the same thing with the onion, these are large enough, they can kind of pick around them. I'm also putting the some onion, and I'm going to, after I put the seasonings, I'm gonna put some onion and peppers and jalapeno on the meat because it'll absorb those flavors of the meat, and the vegetables will cook a little more slowly instead of being on the bottom since this is such a large crock pot. All right, let's talk about seasoning. Oh, and by the way, if you don't have those fresh, fresh vegetables, you could use some dried minced onion instead that would be perfectly fine if you didn't have fresh jalapenos you could use those from a jar or a can i also went through the cabinet and we had chipotle pepper so i could have used that for my southwestern flavor we also had diced tomatoes with green chilies um, we have this rotel diced tomatoes with green chilies so either of those would work i'm actually going to add this one now if i had just canned diced tomatoes tomato sauce tomato paste any of that could go in there but i'm going to add that like, toward the end I also found a lime and I'm going to squeeze lime juice over it. The lime helps make the meat even more tender and I love the flavor it gives to kind of that southwestern um, theme. Okay, for the other southwestern stuff, I'm going to start with garlic salt. The other thing I'm doing while we're doing keto together is I'm going through my spice drawer and using things up. I don't usually use garlic salt. I usually put in garlic and then I add the salt to adjust. I like to be able to control the salt. But in this case, I need to use this up. It's been in there <laughs> for a little while. David's actually looking forward to some of the things in my pantry getting used up. And I actually really have enjoyed the thought of that too. So there's the garlic, putting it right on the meat and over the veggies just a bit. And then the other Southwestern flavors, and you don't have to use all of these. This is simply using what you have on hand, right? Um, so if you have any of these, it'll be better than nothing. 
Um, I found from doing carnitas that oregano, I always thought oregano was like a spice for Italian flavors. It's actually a nice spice for me. And so this is dried oregano. So putting it in the crock pot, I really like dried herbs and seasonings because it's in the, the, the liquid. It's a wet um, heat. And so <laughs> being able to use the dried herbs, it really gets a lot of flavor. And you don't have to use a ton. That's another wonderful thing about the crock pot. You don't have to use a ton of seasonings to get flavor because it's intensified by the moist heat. I'm sprinkling over now some chili powder. And maybe it's cliche, but I have to have chili powder <laughs> on anything Southwestern. Again, I'm just sprinkling it over the meat. I'm actually, that's too slow. <laughs> I'm actually gonna take the lid off. And I'm using, oops, I was gonna say about a half teaspoon, but oops, that's a little more than a half teaspoon, I think. Oh, it'll be fine. I'll put the other seasonings in there. I'm gonna reach in and just grab the chili powder so that I can spread it a bit, but it'll be just fine. Notice I'm not measuring. I'm doing that on purpose because this really isn't a recipe as much as, much as it's a way of cooking. I've got cumin and we love cumin in my house. I'm gonna use a measuring spoon this time. This is a full teaspoon. Um, I'm gonna do a heaping teaspoon because we love cumin. I love cumin on chicken. I love it on a Medita or, uh, South Southwestern flavors, so there's a Mediterranean. I've got some cilantro. Um, it's dried, so the same kind of thing. I'm gonna shake that in there. And again, this isn't something I generally use, so it's kind of exciting to use up some of these seasonings and get fresh ones later. And I'm gonna use paprika. Sometimes I use smoked paprika, but I just grabbed the paprika. I've got a big jar of it. Honestly, we use this for Mexican recipes or uh, Southwestern, and we use it for deviled eggs. We always joke about um, sprinkling it over the top, and I use quite a bit. Paprika is really dried red bell pepper, so if you don't have fresh bell pepper, um, this will give it that same flavor. David's looking at me like, really? I didn't know that. <laughs> it's true. I'm gonna put a little more salt, even though I put garlic salt, I'm gonna put a little more salt, and that's just maybe eighth of a teaspoon. So what I have in here now, and I'm not sure how I can show you if I can lift this out and show you or not. David, you're going to let me know if they can see this. But this is what I have so far. I've got lots of seasonings on that pork roast, and I've got tomatoes, peppers, jalapenos. Now I'm going to pile those vegetables up and put them on top of the seasonings so that the flavor from the onion and the jalapeno and the peppers will go right into that meat. It looks yummy. Now, it's still dry. It's dry in there. So, oops, my jalapenos fell off. It's dry in there, and it's gonna be amazing. when you, If you do something like this, you'll just be so surprised at how much the flavor of those vegetables goes right into the meat. And now I'm gonna open, um, I'm gonna two, do two things. I'm gonna open this can, I'm gonna use the rotel, and I'm gonna use the lime. And so see how easy this is? Again, you don't have to use everything I'm using. If you just have, most people probably don't have dried cilantro. If you just have cumin and chili powder, that's awesome. If you just have chili powder and paprika with no cumin, that's fine too. Use what you have. If you have a taco seasoning, use that. So here's my can of tomatoes and green chilies. And I'd already cut my lime up, so I'm gonna use my juicer and just put it over. I like to put it onto the meat. So I'm squeezing that in. And it's there's so much seasoning, it's not running it off at all. And this lime was really on its last leg. <laughs> I had bought it because Gracie and I like to have fresh limes. And uh, neither of us had used it. Grace likes to put it in her water or make limeade. And neither of us had used it. All right, one more squeeze from this half. Yeah, and I'll do the other half. So I'm just putting the juice of a lime. If this lime was fresher, I would, um, ooh, that little piece of jalapeno about got away. If this lime was fresher, I'd probably zest it and put the zest, but it's not very fresh, so I'm not even gonna zest it. But zesting is a fantastic way to get more flavor into your foods. Okay, Neil. One more thing I'm gonna do before I put the red tail over is we wanna make sure this is nice and fatty, right? 
fat gives it flavor and tends to make meat more tender. I cringe when people cut the fat from meat before they grill it because the fat helps to, to make it, keep it tender. So let me grab the butter because we know butter makes it better. And I'm going to put butter over our pork roast because honestly it wasn't that fatty. I'm just putting this right on top of the vegetables and so it'll melt and seep down in there. And that was a big hunk. So I'm gonna put a little piece on this side. Yummy, yummy. I wanna use that knife again so I don't wanna stick it in there with that raw meat too close. And ah, now I'm gonna put it there. So I just put the chunk of butter in there. And David, I'm sorry, I'm gonna need another knife because it touched the, the raw meat. Let me rinse my hands. Sorry, thanks. All right, and because I'm going to put butter in here too. So the last thing I need to do in this is put in the rotel. So if you're doing a Mexican or Southwestern flavor, you just want to pour everything in there and I'm just dumping it right on top. <laughs> and that's it. Does it smell good? David's looking at it like, yeah, that smells really good. I'm going to put... I'm tempted to put a little more salt, but I can salt it later. You can always put more salt, but you can't take it out. But I have a feeling this is going to need more salt. Okay, I have a feeling it's going to need more salt. I was looking at David. He's like, don't look at me. Now, it depends on what I want to eat. My preference would be to put this on low heat and let it go probably six to eight hours until the pork is just pull apart tender. Once the pork is pulled apart tender, I'm going to go in, I'm going to shred it, and then put it on a plate. I'll serve it with some sour cream, some shredded cheese. If we have avocado, we probably don't, but if we have avocado, I'll put avocado. I've got flesh, fresh cilantro going outside, so I can clip some fresh cilantro to put with it, but that's exactly how I'm going to serve it. So it's not going to be a lot more complicated than that. I'll just put the lid on there. If I need it fast, this one will be fine on high heat, so I could cook it on high probably four to five hours on high. It's going to depend on the thickness of your roast and what you put in there. Now, I used pork because that's what I had. Chicken breast would work in there too, so you can switch out the, the meat. Um, a pork, a bigger pork like shoulder would work. You'd need more seasonings, but chicken would be fine in that. So if you don't have pork, you can switch that up as well. Um, beef would also work if you had a beef roast. That could be really yummy. Speaking of beef, let's make our second creation. This is our chuck roast. It's not a chuck eye. It's a chuck roast. And I'm going to do the same kind of thing. I'm going to put him in here. Now, I found <laughs> the roast in my refrigerator. And it was kind of interesting because David and I both looked at it from the bottom of the freezer and said, hmm. Is this going to be any good? And we said, well, let's take it out and we'll try it. We'll cook it. If nothing else, we'll, you know, we'll cook it for the pups because I had left it in there a while. Now I'm going to keep this really simple. I simply love the flavor of beef. And so it doesn't need a lot of seasoning. I'm going to go in with my garlic and salt because garlic is kind of like butter. I think it just makes everything better. <laughs> David doesn't love it as much as I do, but that's okay. Okay, this is a perfect, the roast is a perfect time to put in, um, I tell you, David probably eats garlic more than he knows. Um, <laughs> he's laughing at me saying that. And I do think this is going to need a little salt, so I'm going to put some salt in here. Now I'm going to tell you, I'm going to keep this super, super simple because just the flavor of beef is really good enough on its own. So this is some garlic and some salt, actually garlic, salt, and salt. Same kind of thing. I don't think I've over seasoned it. And then I'm going to put some rosemary. Now I have dried rosemary. You could use fresh rosemary, but rosemary and beef are really good friends. So I'm not gonna do a ton because remember what I said, a crock pot kind of intensifies the flavors and rosemary can be a really strong flavor. Um, I could also do the same recipe, by the way, with pork if we wanted to switch that out. If I didn't have fresh onion, I'd definitely use minced dried onion with this because it's going to make like this really yummy gravy. But I have fresh onion, so I'm going to toss that in. And this is about one medium onion because I really love the flavor of the onion with the beef. And then I've got celery. And again, just like the um, limes, the celery 
it's not going to hold up on me much longer but celery even if it's still not really crisp you can toss it into a soup or a crock pot and it's okay that flavor is still there and you can toss it in to enjoy it now this crock pot is starting to get full that chuck roast if you can see that chuck roast took most of the bottom of the pan <laughs> and it's covered by um, onion and celery I'm gonna put a little splash of Worcestershire, not a ton. If you don't have Worcestershire, you could put some red wine vinegar. That would be delicious, but you want something. That was maybe two teaspoons or a tablespoon. It really wasn't as much as it looked, I promise. And then the other moisture I'm gonna put is butter. Y'all can say it with me, because butter makes it better. So I'm gonna cut smaller this time and just put it around the top okay one more little smidgen of butter for the middle get in the middle fella okay um, that was acting like a man all right here is the um rice toy and you can see i just put the seasoning and the butter right on top and that's it that's as simple as it has to be you don't even have to add the rosemary if you don't want to salt some garlic some onion or onion powder or minced dried onion if you don't have celery you can use celery seed or celery salt that would work and i did put some salt oh i need pepper let me grab the pepper <laughs> my arms are not wrong enough i am going to put some pepper in here oh there's no pepper never fear <laughs> i've got another pepper <laughs> grinder <laughs> so what happens when you do food photos for a living you have different pepper grinders well not for a living but when you do cookbooks how's that okay and then just that fresh pepper it smells amazing already so crock pot meals what if i ha didn't have the beef now this is a way a great way to season beef the same kind of thing this would have done, been really yummy with lamb um, you could use chicken i probably would leave the worcestershire out if i was doing chicken you could definitely use pork but again i'd leave the worcestershire out um, with chicken i like to use thyme so i might use the thyme instead of rosemary because it's so strong or a little thyme and some rosemary but with the pork with this beef that's plenty now this is going to cook down and it's like i said it's already pre-cook weight it's not even quite a pound so anything i want to serve with this i want to make sure there's either some more protein um, or some fat this um au jus, the 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 um, moisture the liquid that's going to be when you take this out you can simmer that down too and make like a really thick gravy with it in fact simmer it down you can add a little bit of um, heavy cream and some cream cheese not much maybe an ounce or two of the cream cheese maybe half cup of heavy cream let that simmer with these juices for 15 to 20 minutes let it simmer and it'll get a really thick gravy that would be delicious with this. Now, if you're gonna eat the onions and the celery, then you may not need to add another carby side. Um, totally up to you. But this is going to be luscious and it will make the house smell amazing. Same kind of thing with the size of this. It's probably gonna be ready in about four hours on high, maybe six to eight on low. Um, and you don't have to do anything. I love a crock pot because you just fix it and forget it. Anyway, that's what we've got simmering in our crock pot. Don't forget to show me what you put in your crock pot and share your seasonings with us. Hashtag keto together. And I'm looking forward to the next seven days of our 10 day keto together.